Hi everyone, Nick here. Welcome back to my channel. Investing in real estate can be extremely profitable, but it can also be a lot of hassle. I don't know about you, but the process of buying homes, paying high fees, and managing properties seems like it could be a major headache. It can also be a little risky, since it's difficult to diversify when you're buying individual properties. Well, there's a possible alternative that solves these problems. It's called a Real Estate Investment Trust, or REIT for short. In this video, I'll give you an overview of REITs. We'll discuss some things to consider when deciding if REITs should be a part of your asset allocation. Finally, we'll briefly look at a couple of the best REIT index funds. A REIT, or Real Estate Investment Trust, is a special type of company. They're basically like a mutual fund that owns income producing real estate. Instead of having to go out and buy and manage individual properties, you can pool your money with other investors in a REIT. The REIT management company will take care of managing the real estate investments and they'll pay you a percentage of the profits. This provides the economies of scale and diversification that would be difficult to get on your own. The IRS has special tax rules for companies that elect to be treated as a REIT. Since REITs get certain tax breaks, they have to distribute at least 90% of their income to their investors. This means that REITs usually have pretty good dividends. However, these dividends are not qualified dividends that have lower rates like you would typically get in a total market index fund. REIT dividends are taxed like ordinary income. This makes them much less tax efficient. And this is why REIT companies get a tax break, since the investors are going to be the ones that have to pay the tax. If you invest in a REIT index, it's typically best to do so in a tax-advantaged account like a 401k or an IRA. There are many types of REITs. Some specialize in certain types of real estate, like office buildings, apartment complexes, or even hospitals. Some REITs engage in financing real estate. Some REITs are diversified across multiple types of real estate. Some REITs are publicly traded on the stock exchange, or they could be private REITs that might have much less liquidity. If you are going to buy a REIT, it is important for you to understand the type of REIT you're purchasing. In my opinion, the best way is to just use a REIT index fund, which we'll discuss later. If you subscribe to my channel, you know one of the most important parts of investing is asset allocation. If you aren't subscribed, you should subscribe now and support free financial education. REITs are often considered a distinct asset class for asset allocation. With asset allocation, you're looking to get exposure to asset classes that have lower correlations of returns with each other, since this could boost your return while lowering your risk. I cover this in detail in my video on asset allocation, which I'll link up here and below. When it comes to REITs, do they provide this type of benefit in a portfolio? Most people claim that they do. Here's the high level sales pitch for adding a REIT index to your asset allocation. First, people argue that most real estate is privately owned and therefore not reflected appropriately in the total market index. Second, they will point to the high dividends that REITs pay. For investors seeking a high dividend, this could be beneficial. Third, people argue that REITs provide better performance than the total stock market index. Finally, they'll cite a low correlation to the total stock market return, which should add benefits due to modern portfolio theory. This last part is crucial and what we are going to look at in regards to asset allocation. If it's true, it means that adding a REIT index will increase returns while lowering risk. However, some people argue that it is not true. In fact, there are a couple academic studies that conclude that REITs actually do the inverse, that they add risk to your portfolio without boosting the expected return. One such study is from Jared Kaiser and Sean Grover titled, Are REITs a Distinct Asset Class? 
the authors performed a statistical analysis of REITs as it relates to asset allocation. While REITs do have a somewhat low correlation with stocks, the authors argue that REITs do not add an asset allocation benefit to a portfolio. The argument is that the exposures REITs provide can be more efficiently obtained via other stock or bond indexes. They don't argue against having REITs in a portfolio period. They just argue against treating it like a distinct asset class. You can check out the study for more details. I'll put a link down below. One thing the authors mention that is important is the total market index funds like VTSAX or VTI already include about 3.5% of the fund in real estate. You can look at the fund's annual or semi-annual reports to see a precise breakdown for the real estate investments. Here is the semi-annual report for the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index from June 30th. It had 3.46% allocated to real estate. Note that some of the companies are not REITs such as Zillow or Redfin, but many of these companies are REITs. No single study can conclusively prove that REITs do or do not provide an asset allocation benefit. There are some other studies that have similar conclusions to Kaiser and Grover's. However, REITs have a pretty strong past performance and a reasonably low correlation with stocks. REITs have a bit less historical data than stocks and bonds since they're a bit newer. If we backtest an asset allocation on Portfolio Visualizer, REIT data only goes back to 1994. Let's say we started in 1994 with $10,000 and invested $1,000 per month. In the first portfolio, we have a typical global market portfolio like I would recommend with 60% US and 40% international. In the second portfolio, we'll use 10% in a REIT index, 55% US stocks, and 35% in international. The results are pretty close. The column we're looking at is the TWRR, which is the annualized weighted return. The portfolio with REITs over this time period appears to have had a slightly higher return of 0.3% annually. Remember that REITs usually pay higher dividends than total market indexes, meaning REITs are less tax efficient. If you do hold a REIT, you would want to do so in a tax advantaged account or you would be paying a lot more in taxes on those dividends. The future will likely be different than the past, but this provides a little more context. The good news is, by being a disciplined, long-term index investor, you'll likely be very successful either way. If you do decide to include a REIT index in your portfolio, I believe that Vanguard and BlackRock have the best REIT indexes. Vanguard's fund is ticker VGSLX for the mutual fund and VNQ for the ETF. It has an annual expense ratio of 0.12%, which is $12 per $10,000 invested. The fund contains 171 different REIT companies in the United States. The BlackRock fund, ticker REET, has an annual expense ratio of 0.14%, which is $14 per $10,000 invested. This fund contains 326 different REIT companies globally, with roughly 70% in the US and 30% internationally. I spent a lot of time debating if I should add a REIT index as 5 to 10% of my portfolio. I decided the total market indexes are good enough for me. They already contain REITs, and I like to keep my portfolio simple and match the market capitalization. I don't see a compelling reason to invest more in real estate, just like I don't see a reason to overweight other sectors of the market. It just adds complexity to the portfolio and increases the chance of trying to market time when rebalancing or contributing. Thanks for watching everyone. If you got value from this video, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to help support free financial education. Later.